Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from grayflorals.com and today I'm back with the Falling Back to Basics series and we're doing another layout for my go-to design which is L-shaped. Now in October we'll be diving into some other go-to designs that I have but I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and again don't forget to head over to my Patreon to check it out if you're interested to see the real-time process video for one of the L-shaped layouts that I have created but for today we're doing one horizontal photo and one vertical photo and using my how to kill a kit with style kit for September. So I hope you guys have been enjoying these fall pages. I did mention in the September video that I might keep this kit together although I'm not 100% sold on that. I think you guys will see um, later in September when I do the kill a kit and then do my next kit share you'll see what happens but I have had fun working with this kit it's just not really what I'm into working with right now, I don't think. So I think I'm going to have to change it up, but maybe keep some of the main elements. So we still have that fall vibe in there and a little bit of spookiness from Halloween. But I have two photos here, which are from a road trip we took. And these are just normal road trip photos of the mountains and the sky and the road. But what was really fun about this road trip was that it was just at the changing point into fall. So only some of the leaves have started changing. Um, and this is the first time that we'd really been into the Adirondack Mountains back when we lived in New York um, for quite some time. And it was just really beautiful and I wanted to make a page about it. So I did pull out that background paper that has the little sprig leaves and the little acorns. And that is from the Craftsmith paper pad that's in my kit. And I just went through the 6x6 six six pads that are in my kit, which includes the Outfitters collection and the Crate Paper Boy collection. And they're all beautiful colors. I think the layering on here did get a little bit crazy. Um, I picked out a lot of wild patterns, which I don't normally do. I usually have like one crazy one, one subdued one, um, which I tried to pair these together. So I'm starting to pair them together. And I do also have some scraps that I pulled out from the Craftsmith Co. paper pad. And once I figure out which way I want these, I do start gluing them down. Now I will say I did change something a little bit. So I really like doing paper layers. I think it does add something. And I know at least one person suggested I do a video on paper layering. Because um, a lot of people don't understand um, the impact it can cause on their layouts. Um, so I think I'll do a video on that for this series coming up. And if you're interested, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, but photo mats are something that can be really impactful. I don't think these ones were the best choices, but I did really want to use my kit. So I think it works out well in the end that at least I have the same color schemes, the color vibes of the neutrals and then the blues mixed in, um, as well as the reds and oranges. Really gives that nice contrast between warm and cold um, color waves. So kind of like how the trees change from like a nice green tone to the warmer tones of the oranges and the browns and the yellows. So as I'm putting this together, I'm finding that this layout's quite busy. Um, I think the background paper is quite busy, so I will need something to help with that. And as you can tell, since I do have one vertical photo and one horizontal photo, an L shape naturally starts to build, but I am going to emphasize that with some more elements that you'll see here, like that strip that I just put down from a piece of uh, pattern paper from the paper pad again. Really love that paper pad. Um, I know Michaels and Craftsmith have put out some new fall paper pads which look really nice, but I am avoiding them. I do not need any more fall paper until I work through some of this stuff. And lately I've been really been inspired by the couple of ladies who are doing spending freezes. Um, She's Crafty here on YouTube is doing some great, great videos. Christy's Beautiful Life is doing some great, great videos about how they want to use up their stash for different reasons, um, whether it's being overwhelmed or saving money. Um, lots of ladies are doing wonderful things on YouTube and I highly recommend you check them out. Um, and I'm thinking that I should go on a spending freeze, but I want to do it a little bit differently than normally people do it. Um, but I might do a whole video on that, so let me know if you guys would be interested in that as well. So I just laid down a strip of washi tape and pulled out some label stickers. Now I'm looking through the die cuts that are in my kit. I pull out this one that says points of interest, which I think is really, really pretty. And it's the perfect warmish red without being too bright of a red. Um, I don't know if there's a title for that kind of color, but it's exactly what I want. And I also pull in these little photo corners. Now I only had two in my kit, although I know there were four in the original die cut set. So I'm a little confused as to why I don't have all four anymore, but maybe I used two. I think these are the same ones that I used on that 85 by 11 layout. If you guys haven't watched that, it'll be linked in the playlist down below so you guys can see everything I've made with my kit this month, including that one. 
I also pull in some things outside of my kit, which include these camping chipboard pieces, one pine cone, and two woodcuts. I just thought they'd add a nice interest to this layout, a little bit more dimension, a little bit nature, that sort of thing. Now I do have these crepe paper open road pieces, and I really thought the orange one was going to work, but it's just way too bright of a color, and they're actually starting to fall apart, which makes me really, really sad. The foam's no longer sticky to the fabric of the felt pieces. Um, so you'll see how I deal with that a little bit later. Um, but as I go through the items in my kit, I'm finding that nothing, absolutely nothing is matching this color scheme I've created. Um, it's a weird light red color and then this weird tealy blue and then my pictures are green so it's all over the place. But if we keep it simple, sometimes that's the best way to go. And the L shape again is emphasized by this strip here that helps create that non-floating feel. So it really helps ground your photos in place. And I'm just going to put that, and then we have the washi tape running up the left hand side to also help with the L shape. And our title is even going to actually help with our L shape, which you'll see later on in this video. Now I will say I'm not a thousand percent happy with how this layout turned out. I think I was happier when it turned out when I was doing it than looking back at it now, um, editing this video, but I'm definitely not mad at it. I do plan on doing some pages that coordinate with this for some other photos from the road trip that we took um, two, one, one year ago, two years ago, um, and hopefully those will be coordinating in a way that helps this layout thrive versus, you know, make it look incomparable. Um, so I'll probably use the same paper pads and stuff to help get that feeling across. So here I'm going in with my chipboard, and I almost forgot to peel off the backing, um, and I almost just put glue straight on the backing. Don't forget to check your stickers, your chipboard, your pieces for backing, so that way they don't accidentally glue down the wrong bits. Um, so here I tried to glue down the foam. Uh, I just end up taking off one piece of foam because there are two in this layered piece, and the liquid adhesive is not helping. So I come in with my tiny attacher and just staple that baby in. Um, I can only reach the one side with a tiny attacher, so I do have this open side. So what I do is use my fingers to grab a ball of glue from my ATG gun and put that underneath. Um, that seemed to work a lot better, although I do find that it is coming up sometimes. But under the weight of an album, I think it would stay in place quite well. Then I'm going to finish that cluster in the top left with that little chipboard pine cone. How precious is a chipboard pine cone? I think we definitely need more of those in collections in the future. And again, working through my stash kit here, I know I need a title, I don't know where to put it. Um, according to this L-shaped design I want to go, I have an empty space where my photos meet at the top right, and then I also have empty space at the bottom, which also could work because it would flow nicely along that bordered edge we made. So I originally go in for this gold foiled piece, which I ended up peeling off the sticker part of because it was ripping terribly, and this is from One Canoe 2. Um, but this gets so lost on the background paper because it's such a delicate word. Um, it has thin lines. It cannot work. So I have to think of something a little bit more hefty, a little bit more something that has weight to itself. So whether that be a dark brown bold alpha or a black alpha would work nicely. Um, but I end up going with these coin alphas, um, not these gold ones, but I actually go for my red ones that I have, um, which is surprising. It's weird that I have several sets of coined alphabets. Um, but before I do that, I do find these chipboard hearts that I really like. They're this perfect light peach color that matches the background tone very nicely. That's sort of like this warm peachy beige color. They match perfectly, so I glue those down, one in each cluster. Again, just add a little bit more whimsy. But I do pull in these alphabets. Now these are Mirica alphabets, as I call them. Um, whenever I order something off of Amazon and something goes wrong, um, I call them Miracle Alphabets. So this actually happened at Tuesday morning, but I bought them and there are actually three sheets inside instead of two. But that might have been a thing that was just for this alphabet, I have no idea. But I do have an extra sheet of the front set, so I have twice the amount of A's you're supposed to have, twice the amount of A through S, I think. And that's just really, really great for me because I love using those letters. Um, so I go through here and I start coming up with a title. Of course, you have to make sure you have enough letters for each of the words you want to spell, which again is one of the hardest parts I think of scrapbooking is that we have to word scramble every time we want to make a layout. But I end up coming with the title Through the Mountains. Um, now these aren't super mountains, these aren't the big ones, these are just like the hilly mountains um, before we get into the real deal up north of New York. Um, but I really really like these photos and I thought this would help emphasize that 
This was something we hadn't really done before um, and it was really, really fun to experience it. And the other photos I have to go along with these are ones where we pulled over and went to a river off to the side of the road. Um, that was just in the mountains. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, and we did a little bit of hiking there by accident. So to finish the title, I'm going to pull out these black letters from Studio Calico, which are in a beautiful, like rusty orange, not a perfect match to the background paper, but close enough that it'll work. And I'll just add a little bit of adhesive under there to put those down later. But here is the close-up of the finished page. I hope you guys enjoyed this L-shaped layout. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below what type of videos or go-to designs you'd like to see next. But I'm really excited to bring this series to you guys and I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys again soon. Bye!